today I'm going to be sharing my first eviction story with you guys. Um, it's not intended to be legal advice by any means or anything like that. I'm just hoping that sharing my story will help you guys. Um, if you're going through this, it does get easier. Um, I went through this as a first time landlord. This is the very first property that I bought. And I, I bought the property knowing that I was probably going to have to pursue an eviction. Um, that's how I got a good deal on it. I originally found this property on the MLS. It's a side-by-side uh, -side duplex, two bedroom, one bath, one car attached garage on each side. Um, one side was renting for about 300, the other side was renting for about 425, I believe. Um, and I, I got the leases sent over um, to my realtor at the time. I reviewed them, I looked up the uh, current occupants, did a little bit of research, they both occupants that I mean they're paying way under way under market rent um, the, the current market rent is about double what they were paying um, at least uh, so I, I went into it I knew that I was probably gonna I, per the terms of my loan I was gonna have to evict or uh, have one side vacate because the uh, bank's financing uh, indicated that I would have to owner occupy one side. That's how I was able to get into this property. And that's a really good way to get started in real estate investing in general. Um, look for uh, any house hack opportunities or any uh, a duplex is a great way uh, to get into it, figure out something that you still want to pursue. And uh, it's a really good hands-on experience. So anyways, I, uh, I bought the property. I did a lot of research on the tenants. I you know, um, in the state of Wisconsin, you can look up on uh, CCAP, you can see any criminal complaints, any evictions, anything from the courts. Um, they both had many evictions. I knew I was, ho I was hoping to keep one side, I guess, so that way while I was renovating the other side, I would still have some income theoretically coming through, um, which is what I did. I, I planned on evicting the right side of the duplex, uh, just side by side, and uh, that was the one that it was paying 425. However, they had a lot more um, criminal history and things like that that really concerned me. Uh, I also uh, put my I put the offer in, uh, indicating that I was going to purchase this uh, contingent upon the right side being vacant. Um, I believe my offer was. I want to say it was exactly what the list price was. I'm not sure. Um, I don't remember now, but I remember it was a fairly strong offer, pretty low contingencies. Um, just indicated that the only con contingency I had was I had lending contingencies and then um, I had inspection, uh, which I recommend for everybody that's getting started. And then I had a contingency that I could, uh, the right side would be vacated. That way I could move into it. Uh, that's what the bank. Uh, that's one of the bank's requirements was for me to uh, move into one side and uh, order occupy. So I uh, wrote up my loan that way. I did not get the property. It. Uh, I heard that I had the second best offer. No, I, sometimes you hear that. Sometimes it's not always true. But um, it was one that kind of bugged me because I really did like the property. I think it had a lot of potential. I did some research on the sellers and they were... Uh, going through a divorce and I it seemed like probably in that situation they just wanted to get rid of it um, but unfortunately it didn't work out I kind of moved on but I kept my eyes on it and uh, I noticed that it never really went off the MLS I uh, kind of followed up with my realtor I uh, called the listing agent and uh, I finally got I finally heard back that the uh, previous potential buyer actually their had their financing fall through they were all set to buy it and then they had some kind of emergency and financing fell through they wanted to back out and I had already seen it already so I was comfortable putting an offer in um, without having to go see it uh, they were gonna put it back on the MLS and uh, well it was still on the MLS it just hadn't closed yet uh, it wasn't it was pending sale but before they could change it I uh, still put my offer back in although I talked to the bank this time and I try to clarify: Do I need to actually owner occupy right away, or, or what are the what what are the terms? And the bank said they want me per my terms of my loan. I had to owner occupy, 
but that wasn't until I had, I believe it was like three months that they required that I be owner occupant. Um, so knowing that I, I, uh, went forward and I removed my contingency that the right side had to be vacant. Um, uh, my offer got accepted, um, went through everything. Uh, I, during the inspection, nothing was really out of the normal. I mean, they had, their side wasn't the cleanest, uh, but the left side was very clean, which kind of reaffirmed my situation and my, uh, reaffirmed my previous opinions about keeping them, uh, leaning towards keeping them. So I get through the, um, got through the closing. Um, after I purchased the property, I gave, you know, welcome letters and ways to contact me. I heard back very quickly from the, uh, left, left side tenant, um, which also reaffirmed my beliefs about keeping that one. Uh, although the rent was lower, um, the unit was much cleaner and the tenant was much more uh, friendly and uh, actually communicated. I didn't hear back for a, quite a few days. Uh, I eventually got a response from the right side, um, but uh, at the time it was a uh, really, really drawn out process to actually hear back from them finally. I. Uh, I bought this property right before the first, I believe. It was. So the uh, first of the month came around. Uh, the left side had paid the rent, the right side had not, which reaffirmed, again, my uh, opinion on um, having the right side vacate. So I, um, after the first, I give them the notice to vacate. Uh, for state of Wisconsin, it's 28 day notice. Um, and uh, I just kind of waited, I guess. And, um, after 28 days was up, I remember going there on the first of the month, the following month and, uh, uh, I couldn't get any response. Uh, no one's coming to the door. There's still vehicles there. Um, I was under the presumption that someone was still living there. Um, but they had gone through this before. They obviously knew that if they didn't come to the door to kind of draw it out. Um, and this is my first time encountering something like this. So I, I tried to talk to the uh, local police and see if there's anything that they could do. Um, it was a civil matter, so they said they weren't able to do anything. Although the moment I mentioned the property, they did uh, recognize it immediately. Uh, they've had problems there in the past and they, they knew it. Um, as soon as I said the address, they were very familiar with it. Um, I found out later that um, by talking to one of the officers that they had, uh, had drug bus, drug bus in the past and, uh, uh, explained some of the broken door frames, uh, now I know why, uh, a good tip for the future is, uh, checking with the local police. They might uh, have any insight and not really something I would have thought of, but, um, I don't think it would have changed my, uh, decision at all, but it would have been really good to check in with them. And you now I know that that might be something to consider, uh. But I talked to the local police, they weren't able to do anything because it was a civil matter. Um, now, of course, I know that, but at the time, I really didn't realize why uh, or understand at all. Uh, but they were willing to stop by. They said that they would uh, accompany me while I tried to uh, uh, confront the tenant and see if they're still occupying the premise, premises or see what the deal was. Um, because of the extensive uh, criminal history, I was a little bit concerned about that. Uh, but they did have someone nearby in the area and they said they'd be more than willing to stop by. Um, just more of a safety thing. Uh, and uh, when, when I got there, they actually had a couple of officers. Uh, they found out they had run some plates of the cars in the driveway. Uh, one came back for the current tenant. The other one came back for what I presume was her boyfriend, but I don't know for sure. But he had a very extensive criminal history uh, at the time, he had multiple warrants out for his arrest. Uh, so the police were very, very willing to uh, try to assist me. Uh, they uh, stood back a little bit and they said, you know, if I could get him to come to the door and they can uh, see that he's in there, then they are able to um, arrest him for his warrants. However, you know, if you have multiple warrants, you're not very smart, but you're smart enough to know that uh, don't answer the door if you have multiple warrants. And uh, of course, that's what happened. I still didn't have very much success with that, and uh, I was kind of defeated because I, I guess at the time I thought, you know, after 28 days, I gave them the, the service of doing that. I mean, I could have uh, gone for it and just done the eviction there when they didn't pay the rent, but I figured I'd give them the whole month. 
I really didn't necessarily care, I guess. And I was really hoping that, you know, by giving the full month that they would, you know, have the time to get out of there. Um, my other concern, I guess, is if I did evict them or pursue an eviction for the non-payment of rent, that uh, once they pay me, then that eviction would be void. And uh, I guess it's, you know, either way I had an owner occupied, so I kind of went forward with just the notice to vacate since they were on a month-to-month -month lease at the time. I didn't have any luck there. I, uh, I went to the courthouse to uh, file for an eviction. I uh, encountered the uh, clerk at the time that was, or uh, the lady in the, in the, behind the counter. Um, the lady behind the counter, she uh, was just baffled that I would buy a rental property. I mean, I was, I'm young now, I was really young at the time. And um, she's just, I mean, I, I had asked for, uh, you know, whatever paperwork I needed to fill out to uh, start the process of an eviction. And um, she was just, almost trying to talk me out of it the whole time of even owning it. And, um, I was really blown away, but, uh, that was kind of funny at the time I had just purchased it and I knew there was no way I was selling. And I kind of went into the purchase, obviously knowing that something like this might happen. So I had, uh, filed for the eviction. Um, basically I had to pay the, um, you had to pay the sheriff. Uh, most of it was all in one building, although they have the sheriff departments down the road a little bit. So I had to pay the sheriff to post the notice. Um, eventually we got to our court date hearing. Um, she did not show up. So I was uh, waiting for her to show up. There was multiple uh, cases going on at the time. And uh, it was kind of an open thing where they call the next person up and the, the, uh, the judge was, you know, presented the case. If they were there, they would uh, you'd hear both sides and make a decision for the ones before me, I was trying to pay attention. Uh, I was a little nervous and I was really glad that I wasn't called up first. So uh, while I was watching the ones that um, some more experienced landlords or property management companies go before me, I was uh, trying to uh, listen and watch and do everything that they did, uh, just trying to keep note of it. And uh, hopefully I'll be more prepared when it came up to my time. About halfway through, I was called up. Um, my tenant had not shown up, so the uh, judge, uh, I explained my situation to the judge. She was very kind because I was very new at it. So I was a little nervous going into it. Um, but because she didn't show up, I was automatically, I automatically won that uh, case, uh, which was a huge relief. And, uh, I had come really prepared. I had text messages. Um, uh, I had, uh, all my documentation in order, but you know, I was still nervous and I'd never done it before. I know they've gone through it multiple times and I was kind of shocked that they didn't show up. Um, but because they didn't show up, I automatically won. I was granted the uh, writ for eviction. Uh, and uh, I, I delivered that to the uh, sheriff department. And I believe they had like about, a, I think it was seven days after I, after they uh, posted that, that they had to be out. Um, and uh, I had driven by like the day before just to you know see if they were still there. I uh, had seen movement, but I did not, again, have anyone, I didn't have an encounter with anybody, but I knew that uh, they were still living there. So it came to be the day of the eviction. Um, I showed up and there was a couple of sheriff deputies at the, uh, on the premises. Um, they had uh, looked through all the garage windows and they were ready to come in. Um, I, uh, surprisingly enough, the uh, keys I was given from the landlord uh, still worked. They hadn't switched out the keys. Um, at the time, I hadn't gone in before because I did hear that they, they did have a dog, uh, a very aggressive sounding dog, and I guess I wasn't gonna mess around with that. Um, but the day of the eviction, they, the dog wasn't there. The uh, sheriff deputies were able to get into the, um, the, the unit, and um, while I waited outside uh, from the end of the driveway, uh, they came back and I guess at the time I was just so nervous I didn't know what to expect. I was really hoping, you know, there was no major damage. I kind of assumed that being the type of people they were, were I kind of assumed that there would be some kind of damage. And uh, when the sheriff's deputies got back, um, I was trying to read their expressions, trying to figure out, I know they've done this a lot, but trying to figure it out, you know, how bad it really was. Um, and he, he did say, when he got back uh, to the road, he said it was pretty bad. Um, you know, he's seen worse, but it's pretty bad. And I guess uh, I wasn't really sure what to expect when I went into it, but he gave me the keys and said, uh, 
it's been the building's been cleared out. There's no one in there, and uh, uh, good luck. So that was that. I uh, I got in and uh, just just destroyed the the property was absolutely destroyed. Um, the living room was just a mess. Um, in the corner of the living room, there was a uh, coffee can of just coffee beans spilled all over. Um, I'm assuming that's probably to hide the drugs in. I've heard that, you know, that people do that just to hide the drugs in from uh, any uh, drug smelling dogs. Uh, but the place was just absolutely destroyed. Um, when I went in before, they had a candle going during the inspection. During the inspection, uh, nothing really seemed out of order. Uh, the place was a little messy, but they had done a good job cleaning it up. They had a candle going, so nothing really smelled or anything looked out of the norm, you know, out of the ordinary. Um, everything looked pretty normal. Uh, but when I got in on my first day, uh, actually getting into the unit after I purchased it, um, it was uh, it was really shocking to see how they left the place and. Uh, they had a, a, she had a young, really young daughter, so I was just shocked that somebody would actually, that a kid would have to live through that and endure that, and um, really sad, really eye-opening, and uh, just awful that, you know, someone had to go through that, and they had to live there. I was hoping that they just didn't leave the taps on, or um, I was really worried that they're going to put concrete on the drains. I've heard of landlords having to deal with that in the past. I know that's pretty rare, but, uh, you know, it, it could have been a lot worse. And I guess I went into it expecting the worst and hoping for the best and it, it could have been a lot worse, uh, but for it was pretty bad. This is my view when I first opened up the door to go on the house. It was actually pretty bad and the picture doesn't actually capture it all, but worse than the picture is actually the smell of this place. It was absolutely disgusting. There was fecal matter in the hallway in the living room, and there was kitty litter that was dumped all over from the hallway to the living room. There was some mysterious plant in the living room, and in the corner there was a spilled coffee beans, a uh, whole canister of coffee beans that uh, I've heard in the past that people will uh, store their drugs in them. Uh, I can't confirm this, but uh, there's a pretty strong case that that's a possibility. They left a lot of stuff behind, but one thing that I don't see left behind very often is uh, the actual notice for the eviction itself. Here's a pro tip. If you ever forget your court dates because you have too many of them, simply just write it on the fridge. There was a lot of garbage here left on the stove, and above the fridge there was some kind of abandoned science experiment that they were uh, growing in this jar, and it was just nasty. There was all kinds of stuff that they left in the garage, and as you can see, they ran into the garage door a few times, which uh, doesn't quite close all the way. In the corner of the garage, there was a really, really bad smell, and they had uh, piled up all kinds of garbage. Uh, so I started uh, working away at that. But when I got down to the pile of uh, garbage, um, there was a uh, full uh, raw chicken that just was uh, something that resembled a chicken, but was absolutely one of the worst things I've ever smelled. Um, uh, just absolutely disgusting. And uh, the rest of the place was uh, left in pretty bad condition. Um, they had uh, obviously been smoking in it. Um, my pictures of just the, just being able to wipe the tar off the walls and just how nasty it was. Here you can see my girlfriend demonstrating with just one wipe, how nasty these walls were. Overall, I, I mean, got it fixed up. Really nice unit now. Uh, it was something that um, I don't know that I would do it any differently if I could go back. I guess uh, I, uh, there's, there's only so much you can control and you kind of go into it like that, knowing that, you know, eventually you will, uh, it'll all work out, but sometimes there's only so much you can do. And um, I kind of expect the worst, but, uh, you know, hope that it's not so bad. And usually it's somewhere in the middle of that. Um, but it was, a, it was a good experience for my first time. And uh, uh, now I know what to do. I will, would probably do it again. Honestly, uh, I saved a lot of money by doing the eviction myself. I 
lucked out that they didn't actually show up to court. Got very lucky in that sense. But I, uh, I think I'd be even more prepared now watching other people do it. And uh, just the fact that I have more knowledge in real estate and real estate investing, I would feel a lot more confident in doing it again. Um, I'm hoping sharing the story helped you guys. Uh, I, it, I mean, you will get through it. If you're going through this now, you will get through it. In the end, it'll be worth it. Uh, I appreciate you guys uh, listening to my story. Uh, if you have any questions or anything I can try to answer, again, I'm, I'm not a legal expert, I'm not a lawyer, but uh, feel free to leave a comment and uh, I'll try to respond to them as I can. Um, but thanks for listening to my story.